is the definite favorite. Why? Because he comes in here with a two-second seasonal best than the rest of the field. You see on his left, that's Morley Sam Morley. Morley. Sam Morley had a good qualifying yesterday. He did run into DMR. It didn't look like he gave his best effort because Texas was really out of that race, but he had a nice preliminary run. But look for O'Hare. Hoar, excuse me, to run with the pack here and just use his exceptional speed in the last 400 meters of this race because we may see him back in the men's 3,000 meters later on in the program. Ten competitors in this final. Derek Gutierrez of Ole Miss right there with his teammate Walid Suleiman employing some team tactics early on in this mile race. Remember, it's a mile, not a 1,500, so we'll be giving you 440-yard splits. Well, Gutierrez, he was the 12th fastest qualifier coming into these championships. The top seven seeds all made it here to the finals. So Gutierrez being here in the finals is a little bit of a surprise for him to sneak here into the top ten. Always closely watch Gordy Beamish of Northern Arizona University. He trains and lives at that high altitude in Flagstaff. A big advantage for him coming down. 62 seconds for the first 440 yards. A number of these athletes pull a double, a triple, even quadruple duty this weekend in the inside. It's tough to see him, but in the all red, the indis indistinguishable Indiana uniform, that's Kyle Mao. He ran two, mi two one mile races yesterday for the Hoosiers. He closed very hard in that d distance medley relay to get those Hoosiers into third place. So Gutierrez continues to lead with his teammate Suleiman right on his shoulder. Everyone else seemingly content to just let it go this way. Hoar staying out of trouble, and that's the main thing, is just have space to run so you can stay on your feet. We've seen a lot of people in this on this 200-meter oval crash out and not be able to advance. And most of the time when athletes bump, it's not the people that are next to you that knocks you down. It's the people that get in front of you and you clip their heels. That's when you see some of these athletes, that's when you see some of these athletes go down. A real pedestrian halfway point there. 68-7 for that second 440 yards. And of course, pedestrian for, for them, <laughs> not for us or anyone listening to us, but you can tell by the turnover and how tightly bunched the group is with everybody really still in it as Oliver Hawire is now trying to get some running room. Sam Worley as well. See all that pushing and shoving. Very dangerous to see that happening, but now the people are starting to get a little anxious with le less than half of the race remaining. And Sam Worley said in his post-race interview, he said, it was just going too slow for me out there, and I decided to take the lead. He won his heat, but he said that's not a move he would have made a year ago as a freshman. He's much, much less timid this season, getting out there and being a little aggressive. You're going to need to be aggressive because Hawar has got a devastating kick. Carlos Villarreal is in on the rail and Oliver Huar just doesn't really want to take the lead in earnest. Here comes Sam Worley with two laps remaining, 440 yards and everyone is still in this thing. And looking in fourth position, that's the youngster from the University of Arizona, Villarreal, and his coach Dr. James Lee said, you know, he is a great finisher. He's just going to stay with the pack. Expect him to close hard as we get a lot of action on the outside. Yeah, there goes Beamish, just like I said. He's, he's drowning in oxygen down here near sea level. And now the sprint is on. It is Beamish followed by Huar. And Casey Comer of Villanova now into the mix. Along with William Paulson for Arizona State. The question is, did Beamish go too early? Well, Huar has the leg speed. We know that, but Beamish is holding him off. Watch out for Comer. He's in a good spot in third. And Gutierrez trying to get into it. It is going to be Beamish, followed by Comer and Hawar. I told you to watch this guy. He looked very, very easy yesterday in his prelim. And forget the time. This is a championship. It's about winning. And that is what Jordy Beamish from New Zealand and a junior at Northern Arizona. Well, on paper, everybody was giving this race to Oliver Hoar, but Jordy Beamish, he did a good job. He challenged Hoar. He made him work a little bit earlier than he absolutely wanted to. Hoar's legs were spent that last 100 meters. Beamish was able to run away from the outdoor NCAA champion.
and he's a Kiwi and a little bit in the tradition of John Walker with that hair and that running style. Only guy in the field without a sub four minute mile to his to his credit, but you know what? He came in here to Birmingham and he takes the men's mile in 4.07.69. Casey Comer, a late surge over the last couple of laps, smartly run race, gets him second, and Oliver Hoar ends up third. And our winner is downstairs with John. All right, Dwight, we thought, yeah, we might have an Australian. Instead, we got one from New Zealand and Northern Arizona. He's come down from the mountains in Flagstaff to win. Um, your strategy coming into this and how it played out. Oh, look, I was ready for anything. Um, ready for a fast pace or um, I was very happy for it to go slow. Um, I knew there were guys coming off DMR last night and wanted to make the most of that. Um, full credit to those boys but um, trying to go early on them All right. and make the most of being fresh. Uh, Dwight Stones was on the lookout for you the whole time. Uh, why was it you decided to go when you went? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Just went based off field. Uh, I knew that. Um, these guys might have fast speed over the last 50, so just tried to make it count with 300 to go. Yeah. Jordy Beamish, it felt right, feels like a winner. Congratulations. Back upstairs, off the track, and onto the field.